Hello and welcome to another video. This one is going to be less about programming and more about some advice that I've picked up by working in the industry for a while. And this is uh, some advice about large scale refactors and naming. And I've seen this go poorly several times, so I figured I would put out some of my advice so that hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I have made in the past and that some of my coworkers have made in the past. And this is around naming your refactor. Uh, usually when you're replacing some functionality with some new functionality, you go through this process where you have the old functionality, that's your starting state. Your intermediate state is you introduce the new functionality, usually under a different name. Um, and you might use some sort of feature flag system or uh, you know, an allow list that opts in your team members or some subset of your users into this new flow. But you're, you're in an intermediate state where you have both of these things existing at the same time. And during that intermediate state, you probably have them in two different either APIs if they're forward facing or module hi hierarchies if they're you know, just code pieces or something like that. Um, and eventually, once you are happy with the new state of things, you will get to your end state where you remove the old code and cut over completely to the new code. Um, and my advice here is around how you go about naming your replacement refactor module. And the, the, the most common and the most tempting name that I've seen so far is to have whatever your original feature name is and then underscore new at the end. And I've seen this happen many, many times. And the problem with this is these types of refactors often happen again and again. Uh, code is never really done, so to speak. You know, especially if you're working with a website, you probably go through a major UI redesign once every you know, three to four years. And so your thing that you might have called new in 2004 is no longer new in 2021. And so my recommendation is to not use underscore new as a name, but instead use a version number or something that is less meaningless and isn't going to, you know, <laughs> isn't going to be a problem if you go to rename it later. Um, so you might have something like a V2 design. And so you would have my feature name underscore V2 might be a much better name. Now you might say, yeah, okay, you could name it underscore new. And then when you ship the project, you just remove underscore new. And that is, you know, a valid strategy. The problem with that is, is it makes your rollout or your deletion of the old feature a much riskier change because not only are you removing the old feature, but you're also renaming the new code and it makes it much harder to see maybe I accidentally removed new code or kept old code or something like that. Um, or maybe it you know accidentally calls into something that doesn't exist now. And so a, a large scale rename can be pretty risky. The other thing is if you're gonna do a large scale rename and maybe your version control system isn't the best, uh, it may ruin the blame of those modules. So it might it might look like the person who did the final rollout wrote the entire code for the entire project. So without without having to trace through renames, you probably have some issues there. Um, whereas if you use a name like you know my feature v2, that name can live forever and it doesn't really you know it doesn't really impact the feature other than you have to type you know three more characters when you refer to that module name. Or if you're making an API. It's probably a good idea to have it versioned in the first place and so you know api slash two slash whatever api slash three slash whatever um that's okay to live on and that way you know when you cut people over to a new api you can very clearly see the, the usage of those apis now i have seen something that's worse than calling something underscore new and that is to use a code name for your project especially if that code name is a popular word or something else. Uh, now, one example of this was when I worked at Yelp and we were rewriting the business details page, uh, colloquially referred to inside Yelp as biz details. And when we were doing the major rewrite of this page, uh, we called it codename Baz, B-A-Z, which if you're a programmer, you probably see foobar Baz everywhere. And sure enough, in the test suite at Yelp, there was foobar Baz everywhere. And um, unfortunately, we named the, mo the internal modules Baz Details and Biz Details so that, you know, Baz was the new one, Biz was the old one. And then when we went to clean up the code after the rewrite, we realized what mess we had created because now it was really, really hard to tell which code was part of the rewrite or just, you know, <laughs> a test with some placeholder data that happened to use foobar Baz. 
And so it was really, really difficult to clean that up. And there may even, you know, it's it's been, I was in 2013-ish. It's been eight years since then. There may still be some code that references Baz details because it was so hard to refactor out. Um, but yeah, so to summarize everything, like use a version number when you're naming your replacements or your large-scale refactors. Don't use underscore new because you may end up with underscore new, underscore new, underscore new, and that's... You know, somewhat meaningless um and don't name it silly names that uh might collide with other data in your in your code base or uh, code names so to speak especially because code names are also harder for a new person to your code base to understand anyway hopefully this was useful if there are additional things you would like me to explain leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms but thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one